So uh, Charles S. French was until June 30th, 2007, the Director of International Health at the Morehouse School of Medicine. He is a 1971 graduate of Yale University and a 1976 graduate of Jefferson Medical College. He completed a family medicine residency at the University of California, Irvine Medical Center in 1979. He joined the Department of Family uh, Medicine at Morehouse School of Medicine in 1982, and then the Office of International Health in 1989. Eventually, he be becoming the principal investigator of a traditional healer survey among the Sorare people of Senegal, uh, 1991 to 1992. Dr. Finch led three additional traditional healer projects in Senegal, ending in October of 1995. Between 1992 and 1995, he led a group to traditional healing ceremonies in Senegal. Dr. Finch has conducted independent studies in African antiquities, comparative religion, anthropology, and ancient science since 1971. Since uh, 1982, he has published more than a dozen articles, including The African Background of Medical Science and Science and Symbol of Ancient Egyptian Medicine, a collection of, uh, a, 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 let's see, where, a collection of Dr. Uh, uh, Fence's essays, The African Background uh, to Medical Science was published by Karnak, excuse me, Karnak House, London, November, 1990. His Echoes of Dark of the Dark Land, August 91, was published in yeah. by Kente uh, in Decatur. And his most recent book, Star of Deep Beginnings, Genesis of African Science and Technology, was published in February of 1998. Dr. Finch has lectured numerous times in the United States, Senegal, England, Switzerland, Guatemala, Jamaica, Trinidad the Bahamas and Egypt on diverse topics. He has led seven study groups to Egypt since 1989, has traveled to Africa extensively. He was a co-organizer of the Kumba, Kumba Lumba USA, um, an eight day African healing ceremony on St. Helena Island, South uh, Carolina in 1996. He was Morehouse School of Medicine's principal investigator of cooperative agreement with the US sponsored Global AIDS Program Initiative to uh, conduct programs against non AIDS sexually transmitted infections in two Southern African countries. Dr. Finch, we've just read your, your resume. Uh, you know, on the on the flyer we put, you're going to be talking about the age of Aquarius and the great year. Why don't yes. you just uh, tell us what is the great year? Okay, can you now? If I do this, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, all right. Yeah, let's get started on that. Uh, the great year. Who was who were the first people to even measure or? discover the great year. Well, just as you might expect, <laughs> the people of the land later called Egypt, but anciently called Kemet. Now, Kemet has a history. Uh, okay, let's talk about the things that age, give you the age of ancient Kemet or Egypt. The oldest thing that we have that can give you the age of that civilization is actually the Sphinx itself. Why? because this is work that's been done in the last five years. If you look at the, if you're ever, well, there, the, the, uh, the Sphinx sits in a quarry. If you want to say a big ditch. Uh, so it's been, that was hollowed out of the ground and the Sphinx was uh, erected or constructed inside that quarry. Well, mm -hmm. what that does is that allows you to see the, uh, the uh, clay, layers that surround the the, uh, the sphinx and they you can age those layers mm -hmm. and that when you could and, and so the sphinx is as old as those layers 
Can you hear? Are you hearing me so far? Yes. 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 Yep. Okay. Yep. Now, what does that mean? That means if the those layers are between ten and twelve thousand years old, that means the Sphinx is between ten and twelve thousand years old. You get that? Yes. You're not going to find that age, or that chronology, in any Egyptological book in existence. The people who have done that work were actually a couple of uh, 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 geologists named uh, uh, Boval and Hancock. <clears throat> so if the Sphinx is that old, <clears throat> that means the civilization that created it is that old. If you look, if you have any Egyptological books in your hand right now, and you go and read uh, about the uh, beginning of ancient Egypt, they'll tell you the ancient Egypt, the dynastic period, began 3,100 BC. Huh. That's uh, that that's just a, a, a that's just not only false, that's a lie. So you've got to push ancient Egyptian history back. 10,000 years. And you know what the ancient Egyptians said about their own origins? They said their civilization, their people, their culture began 55,000 years ago. That's what they said. So what, what's got to happen is that you got to change your whole way of thinking about that history. But not only the history of ancient Egypt, but therefore the history of Africa. Because the ancient people of ancient Egypt, the early Egyptians, the first ones, came from the south. They didn't come from Asia. They didn't come from the north, Europe. They came from the south. And that's what they say about themselves. That they came from the south. So what does that mean? They came from inner Africa. And that is why inner Africa, what we call, what we think of as Tanzania, Kenya, the Great Lakes region, that was holy, that was their holy land. And they would, they sent expeditions there, at least four that we know about. In the same way that you would go to whatever uh, holy place to, to visit as a pilgrimage yourself, wherever that be, that, wherever that is. If you're a Christian, you'd go to Rome. If you, if you were Muslim, you would go to Mecca. If you were Jewish, you would go to Jerusalem. Those are the holy places of contemporary religions. Well, the ancient Egyptians' idea of a holy place was inner Africa, because that's where they came from. Now, they called their lands Kemet, their country, Kemet, K-E-M-I-T. You know what that means literally? The black land. Now, you say, well, and you know what the... Uh, uh, Egyptologists say, the Egyptologists say, well, they're just talking about the black soil, except for one thing. The ancient Egyptians called themselves Kemiu, K-E-M-I-U. And you know what that means? Literally, the blacks. They called themselves black people. Now, how, how much distortion, outright falsification has there been around African history generally and the history of ancient Kemet or I should say Egypt and Ethiopia, Kemet and Cush, because the ancient Egyptians, they came from Cush. Cush is another name for Ethiopia. By the way, if you've never been to Egypt, if you don't do, go anywhere else in the world, go there. And then you go south to the Aswan Dam, then you'll see the true original black Egyptians, the Nubians. And they still have their ancient look they're not, they haven't been, that hasn't been changed by the Arab invasion, it hasn't been changed by the European invasion. They are still very much look, as they looked thousands of years ago. And they well, maintain, Dr. Finch, they, they've Dr. had to change, of course, their kind of their religion and their culture, but they kind of maintain their, them, they kind of keep to themselves. Uh, Dr. And Finch, uh, very Dr. good Finch, looking people, by the way. Dr. Some of the Finch. best looking people I'd ever, I've ever seen. The Dr. Nubians. Finch, Dr. Finch? Yes. So with respect to the great year, so it's it's a 26,000 year period. Um, 
is that associated with that Giza plateau and the and the Sphinx and uh, etc.? Oh, good, good. The, the, your voice has come back. That's good. All right. Yes, though um, you got to think of <laughs> how, how do you put this? They thought of themselves. They thought of their chronology in terms of twenty six thousand years. What is that twenty six thousand years? That is the time it takes for the, uh, oh gosh, can't even think of what I'm talking about. The rotation of the, uh, what is the thing, that, the, the, the thing that goes through the earth? The, the, it, the, the axis? Yeah, the axis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That takes 26,000 years to complete a circuit. Mm -hmm. And they divided that 26,000 year, they, they discovered that 26,000 year period. So that means we even go back before 12,000 BC and they divided it into months. Those months were each 2,160 years long. What do we call those months today? We call that an age. That's an age. I remember, I don't think any of you as old as I am, but back in the 70s, no, 60s, there was a play, uh, a musical called Hair. And the, 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 uh, the main song in that musical was the dawning of the age of Aquarius. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. That was a, that was, that. That was a very uh, popular song back then. The age, of, okay, we'll come back to the, well, no, we're, we're getting to the age of Aquarius, you see? But that's one of 12 ages, why? Because right now we're in the age of Pisces. You see, because this thing, this thing is actually tracked, you might say retrograde. So before Pisces, there was Aries, the age of Aries, 2,160 years. Before that, age of Taurus, 2,160 years. Uh, Gemini, 2,000. And, and the great year for the ancient Egyptians started in the age of uh, the lion, Leo. Okay, now I know I've seen him going all over the place. But okay, we're getting down to the age of Aquarius. Because we're coming to the age, end of the age of Pisces, the double fish. That will come to an end in 19 years. It started about, I got to get these figures straight, 2120 BC, about 100 years before the birth of Jesus. And by the way, I hope we don't have any dyed in wool Christians here because I got to tell you something that's going to, that's going to shock you. That whole Christian emergence is tied to that great year, is tied to the age of Pisces, which emerged about 100 years before the birth of the historical Jesus. And that uh, age of Pisces was the age of the double fish. Now, I'm, I grew up Catholic, and I still go to uh, church with my family and all. And what, it, what are the symbols? What, are the, what is the symbol of Christianity? The two fishes, the, you know, the you you know when you do you give out the the sacred meal, it's a loaf and two fishes. So the two fishes are symbolic of Christianity. This Christianity began uh, in the early in the uh, beginning of the age of Pisces, and that's when Jesus lived. Yahushua, that's his real name. Yahushua, uh, uh, the let's see, let's see, the great one of Yahweh. Okay. Yah Yahushua. Now, okay, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting so in, intense, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought a little bit. But so we have been in the age of Pisces for a little for over about 20 more than 21 centuries. And in 19 years, I don't think I'm gonna live to see it. I'm 74. <laughs> so um you, if any of you are young enough to get to, it's going to be 20, what are we, what's this, 2022? Mm -hmm. It's going to be 2039 or 2040. That you will see the change, the cosmic change of these cosmic ages. You will participate in that. Can you imagine what that means? And what will it be? The age of Aquarius. But what was the original age of Aquarius? The age of Aquarius was originally the age of Hathor. The ancient Egyptian goddess, the goddess of spinning, the goddess of weaving, but she was also a goddess of uh, of water. 
and she was also had hair. That means the mansion of Horus. She was sometimes called the mother of Horus, like Isis, but she was other times called the wife of Horus. Had hair, and her age will be here in about 19 to 20 years. Now, and, Dr. Dr. Finch, yes. Dr. Finch, so when we go from age to age, and, and this, is, this is said about that, so like being in this age, this age is kind of like a dumbing down, something, I guess the position of the sun and the earth, the consciousness is low and, uh, and, and you, you know, associated with the fish, their statement is, I believe. And then going into Aquarius, the statement is, I know. So uh, from your studies, do you think that this will mean a, uh, a gain in consciousness among humanity? Okay, okay, I don't think, I know this. A change in the consciousness of humanity, it cannot be avoided. It's already beginning to happen. You okay. see, this is, this is the thing that I wanna hammer home. You know, we don't just live on this isolated earth and, and, and everything that happens to us is uh, earthbound. Oh no, we are affected by all the cosmic forces that impact the earth, the solar system, and everything around us. We are indeed. So uh, just getting back to the age of Aquarius is the gate age of Hathor. Now, Hathor is who? A goddess. And so this will, this will, you're gonna see a shift in the way things are perceived. You know how it is up, up the last 2000 years. This has been a masculine oriented world. Well, that's going to change. And then nothing anybody can do about it. Because the goddess, you see, the goddess, the goddess is real. She's here. Just like you, I don't, I don't know if there's any Christians among you, I'm not asking you, but just like Jesus is real for Christians, the goddess Hathor is real in exactly the same way. She is not some, she's not an abstraction. She's not just out there, somebody, we're just a figment of our imagination. She's, hey, gentlemen, is, is there a woman in, I don't know if there's a woman with you. Yeah, there is. She is with you right now. And if you would just meditate on that, you will feel her presence. She's your mother. She's your mother. In some ways you could say she's even your wife, just like she was to the, to the men. She was your mother. And just like the Horus, she was both mother and wife. And my goodness, I, I just, my, I just uh, start trembling with anticipation. I'm not going to, like I said, I think I'm too old to actually get to the, the, the change. But those of you who see, get there, get yourself ready for it. That's the other thing I want to say. What year did Medi you say that changes? Pardon me? What year is that coming? Yeah, let me think. Darn, I'm, I'm losing track. 19 years from now. I'm, I'm trying to think, is it a little later? I'm, I let, let me give- You said 19 let, years from now. Yeah, I said 19 years. It might be a little longer than that. That's what I'm trying to get my mind wrapped around. I'd have to go back and look that up. But it's between 19 and 29 years. It's, it's like in that, in that period. I think it's close to 19 years. And it's already affecting us, brothers and sisters. And one of the things you can see is affecting us, uh, affecting, you see, the rise of things in the feminine sphere. That was inevitable because the feminine had been consciously suppressed by uh, patriarchal peoples and religions that came in and took over Egypt, you know, stole from Egypt, took over and Africa. And these were all patriarchal religions. Christianity, Christianity being among those Islam, Judaism, there's no room, there was no room for the goddess in any of these religions, and even in Christianity. You know, like I said, I was born and raised a Catholic, so there was the Virgin Mary. She was very important, but she remembered, uh, I don't know if any of you, anyway, she was not giving divine, given divine status in the Christian dispensation. Even now, that's true. But, uh, Dr. Finch, we have yeah. a question. Uh, uh, Brother Bauman Daly. As this question, so go ahead and uh, uh, ask your question, Dr. Finch. 
Uh, Dr. Finch, with this uh, change uh, during the age of Aquarius, and since we are in the area of the dawning of the age of Aquarius, uh, are we to anticipate a change in ethnic relations? Well, inevitably, inevitably. Now, don't ask me exactly what that change is going to look like, exactly. But absolutely, everything is going to change especially those people who have been ground down into the dust. Black African people, the Indians, Native American Indians, uh, just to name uh, uh, a couple of, in, uh, of, of people that have been ground into the dust. The Indians, they almost, they, they almost did commit genocide against the Indians, especially in America. The African people, you know, somewhere between 50 and 80 million people were taken out of Africa during the slave trade. Can you imagine? So, yes. So, uh, and you see, this is the thing. This is the thing that you need to take seriously. Nothing, uh, there's always justice in the, in the universe. Always and forever. So, you pay for everything that you do. Good, bad, or indifferent. All the evil you do, you will have to pay for it. When you have really done good, you will benefit from it. But nobody, this is it, and I'm, I'm getting off a little bit off the subject, nobody gets away with anything, and the ancient Egyptians knew that. They just think they do. You know, we know what has happened, to, we know what has happened with the Europeans in America, Europeans in Africa, Europeans in everywhere, and they, they, they think that they have um, gotten away with it. They think that they that, that nothing is going to happen as a result of this. Boy, oh boy. You know, you, uh, oh yeah. There will be there will be consequences. I think the consequences are already beginning to show themselves. Now I'm getting a little moralistic about all this, but the point is, let me let me see if I get back on track before any more questions are asked. Anyway, the ancient Egyptians, you see, they understood all of these interconnections. But they didn't just, you know, so there was this, there was this religious, there was this philosophical, metaphysical, ethical system. And around that, they built up this absolutely unbelievable material uh, civilization. Who has ever built anything remotely resembling the pyramid? Has it, have any of you been to Egypt? Yes. So you've seen them. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, yes. Every I've been to yes. times. Every time I go, I walk around the Great Pyramid. I just walk. I, I go around it. I just make a circuit around it. And uh, we don't even know what it. Let's see, that Great Pyramid used to be cased in ivory blocks of stone that were taken out by peoples to use to build their their cities and everything else. They were literally. Uh, taken out of the Great Pyramid, but they couldn't. They could not destroy those pyramids. Yeah. And those pyramids, you see. Oh, let me tell you. Let's get on the, the that. Let's talk about the Great Pyramid. Yeah, so just, uh, it, the uh, latitude, the latitude of the world, the longest latitude in the world goes through the Great Pyramid. Longitude, the long, the longest longitude of the world goes to the Great Pyramid. So in a real sense, the Great Pyramid is the center of the earth. Can you imagine mm. that? And, right. uh, 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 you know, and, and one other thing, you, you got me talking, so I got to keep, let me just say this. They knew the world, you know. They went everywhere. They certainly came here. I'm not talking about the people of ancient Africa. They went everywhere. Um, they went east, north, east, south, and west. So um, uh, they knew that they, they knew what was here. In fact, uh, it's interesting when Columbus stumbled on America. <laughs> you know, he he had he had a, some uh, 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 translators, and they were translating from the native people here. And native people said, "Well, you know, there's a group of black people who live." Down south of here, within what is now pa uh, Panama, and they've they've been here for two hundred years. 
That's what the Native, that's what the Indian Native Americans told Columbus. The idea that he just, you know, he didn't discover nothing. He, you know, he got here because he knew it was here. And people from Africa, North Africa, have been sailing across here to here for centuries already. There, you, it, it, it's uh, it's mind-boggling what we have forgotten about our own history, and we haven't taken time. We haven't taken the time to relearn it. But okay, let's not get off on that. Uh, but, Dr. Uh, Dr. Finch, uh, we had we had two hands raised. Uh, one was <laughs> Minister Malik. Are you ready to take questions? I just oh started. look, well, uh, hey, I'm at your disposal. You can do this okay. anyway. All right, all right. Uh, so, uh, Minister Malik, you had your hand up, and then uh, what was the other brother that had his hand up? Um, well, I don't see it right now, but uh, go ahead, go ahead, Malik. Uh, I just want to say, you know, I'm I'm more than willing to wait until Dr. Finch uh, concludes or opens it up for question and answers, but if he but if he's extending an invitation to ask the question. Yes, uh, I do extend that, I extend it, yes. Uh, first of all, Dr. Finch, thank you for being here and sharing this vast a wealth of knowledge with us. And um, you know, it was 27 years ago at, at McClinus High School during the No More Lecture Series, uh, June 3rd, 1995 to be exact, when I first- Well, wait, wait this, is a, oh, this is in Oakland, isn't it? Yes. McClinus. What's the Bill Ru I always think of that as Bill Russell's uh, high school, but go ahead. Yes, absolutely. That's where I had uh, the pleasure of meeting you uh, some 27 years ago. So I to you, yeah, uh, you signed my book, June 3rd, 1995. Goodness uh, gracious, okay. I I'd like to post to you, this, actually, uh, it's two quick questions. Uh, one question is a repeat of what I asked you on that very date, which is, uh, I raised a question regard, regarding the great Sphinx, or Harim Aket, and asked you, is it possible that it was constructed or uh, conceived during the year, uh, the age, I should say, of Leo? So that, that's one question. And the, the second question is, you, you indicated that we're now in the age of Pisces, uh, perhaps at the, Pisces. The end, at the end of the age of Pisces. Yes. At the end of the age of Pisces. And so, uh, and I happen to be a Pisces, uh, by the way. So do I. So <laughs> I. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, even though we're at the end, I wonder if you could uh, kind of tell us uh, uh, what can we expect? Uh, what are the signs? Uh, are there any revelations that we should be aware of or uh, experiencing uh, uh, during this age of, uh, of Pisces? Boy. You see, this is the kind of question where I'd have to go and uh, uh, think and read, and before I can answer, let me, let me, let me. Uh, so it's, first of all, it's a, it's an age. It has a, a double aspect because there's, uh, it's two Piscean fishes. Okay, now it's, a, you know, and it has to do with the waters, and boy, that's a good question. Seems like I should have a better answer for that because I'm, I'm a Pisces myself. Um, my goodness, it'll come to me, but ha ha ha. I, I should have been, I should be able to answer that, shouldn't I? Well, what you're gonna make me do is that I'm gonna go back and uh, I'm gonna have to do some more homework <laughs> on that. Uh, I don't think I don't think it's that hard to figure out, but uh, the age of the double fishes. Cause that's that's the thing. Is is you gotta you gotta take these symbols these symbols, symbolic references, real seriously. They're meant to be taken seriously. Because uh, that's a, in ancient Kemet, that they did. You know, these, the, uh, and, and notice that the Piscean, the Pisces, the, 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 the Pisces, Piscean constellation is, is in the heavens, isn't it? Everything we've been talking about is heavenly born. All of it. You see, this is the ancient Egyptians. <clears throat> And I'm actually African because it includes the Ethiopians and the Kushites and all the other Africans from the Northeast Africa. Um, they were all, uh, uh, they watched the stars. They watched the heavens every single night. One of you said you've been to Egypt. So you know that it is clear and cloudless 20, uh, 365 days a year. Or if you want to say it, 365 nights a year. The ancients uh, of Northeast Africa 
watched, looked at and observed and measured and watched uh, those heavenly movements every night for 4,000 years, or probably more like for 10 to 12,000 years. They, they were serious about all of that because, because you might say they, they, it reflected their own lives or their own lives reflected that. So, you know, they, as far as they were concerned, they were, they were the children of heaven, even though they're here on earth. And um, what can I say? Um, we, one of the things that I think people of, you know, people of color, African people, we need to do, start doing more of, you need to, you need to, we need to be looking at the heavens. I mean, not just looking at them, going out there, oh, it's nice out tonight, and a lot of stars. We need to be examining them and studying them the way we used to, all the time. Dr. Finch, uh, yeah. we, have a, we have a question, uh, Sister Judy uh, Grisham. Oh, Judy Grisham, yes. Go I ahead, agree. go ahead, take yourself off mute, Judy, and go ahead, ask your question. No. Yes, okay, hi, Dr. Finch, okay, welcome again. Um, yes, we, and I'm so happy you're here and you were able to get on. Um, we, you and I were talking earlier and I share it with you that Minister Imhotep was definitely interested in hearing a lot more as well about the Dogon. So yes. you were sharing with me um, your visit to the, the area that the Dogons live. Yes. I don't know how long ago it was, but you were sharing that and I don't know how you might want to tie in. No, no problem. We, we can go right the there. Dogons. Yeah, the Dogons and how they, you know, what they're, some of their fantastic um, observations and knowledge. That's what we were talking oh, they about. Came, they, they, they came from the uh, Northeast Africa. They came from the Nile Valley and said so, okay? What made, what made them leave? Uh, the Arab invasion. Because the Dogon didn't come into what is now Mali until about 700 AD. And they were pushed out. You see what was happening, the Arab invasion uh, well, you know, they were going to force them to convert to Islam. Well, they weren't going to be able to resist the might of the uh, Muslim armies. So they just left in a body, most of them, not all of them, but most of them, and went west um, for 2,000 miles into what is the country of Mali. I've been there. I've been, I've been, to, I've been to Dogon country. Now, they, uh, the Dogon came, no, it's, let me get this straight, because it was, a, it was, it happened. They got to Mali, and they were there for about goodness, five, six, seven hundred years, and then Mali, most of the rest of Mali, became Islamized, converted to Islam, and then they went all over Mali, again trying to force people to convert to Islam. Well, the, what the Dogon did, they sent representatives to find the most inhospitable part of Mali they could find that nobody would care to come to that nobody cared enough about to come to and take. And that was the Bandiagara Cliffs. And uh, that's what they did. When they found it, they came and they found and they went almost again. Uh, they picked up in a body a second time and went to the, the live at the base of the Bandiagara Cliffs. And the Bandiagara Cliffs, it, it, it isn't easy to live there. It's going to be recorded too. I'm sorry to hear what you said. I'm sorry. She, Hello. She, she she was just talking to someone there at her house. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Uh, continue. Okay. Um, um, and I've been there. I went there in 1995. And yeah, we, so we went to I actually went to Dogon Country. Stayed in the Mopti. That was that's the nearest town to the the where the Dogon live. Now they live at the base of the Bandiagara Cliffs. You get to the bottom of the Bandiagara Cliffs and you look up and you see this city. And it stretches for 123 miles at the, you know, 20 feet up. And it's, it was there even before the Dogon got there. Because the Dogon talk about it. The people they call the Telem built this city, which is 123 miles long but it's up there in the cliff. 20, 20, this is 123 miles long, 20 feet high in the cliff. Can you imagine? 
And there's uh, nobody lives up there anymore. And by the time the Dogon got there, uh, the, the, the Tellum were no longer there. That's what they call them, the Tellum. But boy, you can sure see that city from even from down at the base of the cliff. And uh, uh, and so, you know, and, and so the Dogon are there and they went there because, as I said, they, they just they were looking for a place that nobody cared enough about to come to come after them. And uh, they maintained and sustained their Dogon culture, language, religion, beliefs, un, undisturbed. And then, uh, oh gosh, what the heck is his name? Hmm. Oh, I'll think of him. It's a, it's a French, it was a French anthropologist. Uh, uh, Dieterlin Grioli. Uh, yeah, yeah Dieterlin and uh, the other was one more. Grioli? Grioli? Grioli. Griol, Griol. That's yeah. right. You got it right. Mm -hmm. um, they started going and studying. Uh, this was back in about, about 1930. They started going, they were anthropologists. So they went among the Dogon to study them and learn all they can about them. And the Dogon, the Dogon uh, let them come. I mean, they couldn't stop them coming in, but they didn't, they weren't telling them too much. And the Griol and Dieterlin just felt like, you know, you know, they would give them just enough and then send them on their way. And but uh, Dieterlin and Griol knew that they weren't getting it all. But they kept, for 25 years, they kept coming back. Finally, the, the Dogon uh, elders got together and had a long discussion and they decided to reveal the deeper me the deeper aspects of their system to uh griot and detour and they did finally and that turned into the book called the pale fox that book is still i have that book so you should be able to find it yeah. it'll take you a long time to read it it is not easy reading oh. Oh. um Hold, hold on, I gotta get something. My my phone is gonna is gonna phase out here in a minute. So you're gonna have to give me a five minute respite so I can get um All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, get a, get a cord. It, it's six oh two right now. Uh, Minister Macalisi has his hand up and he'll be the first person uh to come in when Dr. Finch uh, returns. So uh just to recap, so he was talking about the uh great year which is a, a, a period of approximately 26,000 years. It's 25,000 something, some odd years. And uh, he used the figure 2160. In other uh, 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 studies, it says 2155. So each age is, is, that, is that period. And each age represents uh, something. And he said something that I'm really happy that he did because when I say it, uh, because I'm not Dr. Finch or Dr. Van Sertema, people always kind of bristle at it. But he said, "Did you did you get what he said? The 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 statue that we call the Sphinx, fifty five thousand years. You see that fifty five thousand. And uh, you know we've been here a long time. And in our holy book, one of our holy books at Wose." It's uh, called 2000 Seasons. And he says, they want to know how old we are. You know, have them to go to the beach and start uh, counting the uh, grains of sand and then go to the ocean and count each drop and then go to the stars. And that's how old we are. That's how, that's how long people have been around. There is a, uh, in Gabon, uh, I'm just doing some filler until Dr. Finch comes. But there is a uh, uh, a place in Gabon, uh, and it's called Oklu, and it, that is a place where a a nuclear power plant has been found. French, the French. You know, they get their uranium from Gabon. And, and in 1972, they received some uh, uranium that had been used. 
And when they and when they uh, went to they, they 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 where did this come from? Oh, it came from this place in Oakland. And what they found was a nuclear power plant. Now, uh, one of the ways that they get around telling you what it is is they say it's a natural phenomenon, but you have to have certain conditions in order to uh, use it. And it's like a mile by a half mile. Uh, African people were, were doing things uh, in the ancient times that, that, that people have no idea. And, we're, and, and that's what he's talking about, this coming age where the, somebody asked in the chat, the, the, the ages kind of affect the, the consciousness of the of us here on the earth. And so this last 2160 2, year period has been kind of like a dumbed down period. And uh, as he pointed out, it was it, it was an uh, increase in the in the patriarchy. Uh, women were put down. Uh, at, at one point in Arabia, women were highly valued. Before there was Allah, there was a goddess called Alat. And so many things. Dr. Finch, are you back? No, no, no I'm not back quite yet. Okay, man. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to keep it. Back, Minister Makalisi, why don't you ask your question and maybe we can, uh, maybe Dr. Finch can hear it. Go ahead, Minister Makalisi. Take, your, take yourself off mute. And uh, let's let's hear your question. And somebody put a question in the chat that we should address. Well, my question is about uh, you know, this, this 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 changing, this transformation, if you can call that, from from feminine to masculine uh, dominance, if that's the right word to use. And and I was wondering about uh, um, you know where I've read about uh, there was this tradition in in pre dynastic Kemet, as I understand it where uh, there was this feminine force, this feminine nature, uh, 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 Neat, who was, who was understood to be the power that wove creation into being. And uh, yeah, uh, the scholars, you know, presently that, you know, the ones that I've been exp uh, exposed to don't, 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 get, don't get into that. And I don't know if, if, if if uh, you know there was this kind of you know, cosmological change that, that had this transformation from feminine to masculine in 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 in, in, in ancient Kemet or what became Kemet, uh, that that you know took the focus away from the understanding, embracing the universe to be woven in to being by this uh, feminine energy, this feminine spirit, um, and and that. But but as I'm as I'm relating to it, uh, um, even when when in Kimba they got into to building things out of stone, uh, sacred uh, um, um, what what's the word here? I'm losing the word. A sacred a sacred uh, temple, if you will, in which to place their their a temple in which to place their sacred uh, uh, um, objects, symbols, representations of the Most High. They 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 took their tools and etched um, the the uh, 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 etched a woven pattern in the flooring. That was the, that was what they placed their, their sacred uh, symbols on. And so maybe the, you know I don't know what the relationship between um, you know that kind of transformation from feminine to masculine uh, or, or you know just how to how to relate to that if. If, uh, if it has anything to do like with what's what 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 we're talking about that's coming up in the next we move from Pisces to uh, Hector. Uh, you know, since you mentioned uh, uh, Neith or or Neth, uh, I I have a PowerPoint from someone uh, that I know. Uh, it's not one that I did, uh, but there is a slide in there that focuses on that, and let's just look at that for a minute. So uh, I don't know if you all can see that or not. Let's see, let's go to it. So here, uh, she includes this thing. Sais was known to be a place where many secrets were held and it was the place where the Netter Neith 
or Neth represent the fabric of our reality. As a netter of creation and weaving, she is said to reweave the world on her loom daily. Her name may also be interpreted as meaning water. In time, this meaning led her to be uh, led her being considered as the personification of the primordial waters of creation. She is identified as a great mother goddess in this role as creator, and that is coming from Plutarch. And then she includes these uh, uh, other slides. So this is a beehive uh, here, and, and this is her vest, uh, her clothing, and it, and it represents the, the very fabric of, of the universe. And uh, probably uh, that will, um, you know, when we get, when uh, our consciousness, uh, humanity's consciousness returns, we'll be able to uh, vibe into uh, that aspect of creation. Dr. Dr. Finch, are you ready? I I'm having a problem. I'm afraid my phone is going to cut off. And I'm having a problem finding the uh, the darn thing to uh, keep it going. It's yeah. kind of a there it is. Oh, you found it already? No, I haven't. Oh, uh, okay. If I could go on my my uh, tablet, see if that works any better. My tablet is out here. Oh, well, that would be good. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's six eleven. We had advertised to go into six thirty. Are you all uh, okay with going over time a little bit? Uh, is everybody uh, uh, okay? Okay. Well, right. We we got a thumbs up from Texas. Got a thumbs up from San Francisco, Atlanta, uh, uh, Baltimore, Virginia. Oh, all okay. these. Well, I can't. I, I, that's unbelievable. <laughs> you know, we just said Dr. Finch was coming, and and people. People came on, so people from all over. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. This is bothering me a lot. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Uh, maybe we can attend. Uh, go ahead, uh, Judy. You have your hand up. Go ahead. Yes, I, I was curious. Um, I don't know if Dr. Finch is able to answer while he's working on his technology, but maybe even Minister Imhotep or one of the other guests. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting here, so go ahead and try to ask, and I'll see if I can. Try okay, to... all right. Um, what? How did the How did the Dogons find? How did they? What type of science or studies or techniques? What was the method? How did have you all? Has it been written? Or well, that's the, that's the thing. Uh, they they didn't they didn't write anything down as such, uh, and yet they were able to develop this highly developed system uh, without any writing whatsoever that we know about. Um, what do you say, what does one say about that? I don't know. I don't know um, what else to, I don't know how to say, darn it. Boy, well, it well, my question, even if it wasn't written, how, how do we know what they know? How, you know? Okay, what, okay, the, the book is The Pale Fox. And it becomes clear that they brought what they do know out of Egypt, out of Northeast Africa. Let me put it like that. Uh, they did do that. Uh, and, and that means out of Egypt because they can trace their origins to Northeast Africa. And uh, I just don't know what I'm, why I'm having this trouble. Uh, yeah, they, they, so when you think about it, you look at their system, can you still hear me? I yes. just may have to go yes. until I can't go any longer on this thing because I'm having a trouble. I'm trouble getting it. To... All right, let's just go as far as we can go here. Um, they, you know, they 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 tell you they came out of Northeast Africa, their remote origins, uh, about 500 A.D. They moved to what does I say, Mali, and but they left where they were in Mali. They left it because. Uh, there was a Muslim invasion of Mali in 700 AD or a little afterwards. And of course they wanted to uh, force everybody to convert to Islam. And the Dogon 
just just refused to do that. And they realized they couldn't stay there uh, because they would be forced to. So they, they moved in, in a body. They sent four people to scout out a place for them to move to. And it, would, it, it was the, what they call the Bandi Agra Cliffs. Uh, that's about three hours from the town of Mopti, M-O-P-T-I. Uh, that's the closest town of any size to the uh, to Dogon country, but you know they have they have ho- they have motels there. You can go and stay there and whatnot, and then you just have to. Dr- oh yeah, you can even there's even places near Dogon country where you can actually stay overnight because it's been done. I've done it. We've done done it with the three people that went with us. Um, so, um, oh gosh, I forgot the rest of the question. Um, well, uh, well, I think. What I'm curious about is how did we discover that the Dogons had this knowledge about Sirius um, B? Oh, because as I said, they uh, revealed it to, um, oh boy. Neutralin and- and, and Neutralin and- and, uh, and uh, Rio. What's it Rio. Rio. Yeah, yeah they, they, they made a collective decision. Their elders decided to uh, instruct Neutralin and Griol in their knowledge. Because Dietl and Griol had been pestering them, so to speak, for 25 years about, well, they would tell them, they would tell uh, the, uh, the two anthropologists just enough. And, uh, and then they just, then uh, Dietl and, and uh, Griol would realize uh, there's more than we're getting. So they would come back and they would just, and they would get a little bit more, a little bit more. And that went on for 25 and finally, as I say, the Dogon elders gathered together and made a decision to reveal the deeper aspects of their system. And that's what you see in the book, The Pale Fox. Also, uh, uh, if I may, Dr. Finch, uh, another good book uh, that's in, in the same vein is uh, Conversations with, with Olga Tomelli. Yeah, ex- exactly. Conversations exactly. with Olga Tomelli. Yeah. And uh, he was a Hogan, which that's is- right which is uh, like these people in, in the background in my picture, they were, they were priests and he was blind. Uh, and he, uh, he gave them knowledge on a certain level in uh, Dr. Uh, Oba Tashaka's book, uh, Return to the Divine Mother Principle of Male-Female Equality. He talks about the three different uh, levels, uh, the, the, the clear word, Excuse me. The back, the word backwards, the word yeah. side, sideways, and then the so die or the clear word. Clear word. Go through years of that, Doctor Finch. We have a question, Sister Naja. Go ahead, answer your question, and take yourself off mute uh, to do that. Hello. I was having a, was having a hard time unmuting. So um, my question is about the goddess, and we're, um, you said that we're going into the age of the goddess. Yep, and I, are. I would like to know, yes, how is that going to happen? Well, it's kind of a two-part question. Understanding the way that they're looking at the female now and um, how people perceive the female and how they perceive beauty and all this, because now there's no appreciation for feminine energy for the female Uh-oh. and, and we're, that, that, we're on that the- that is going to change i'm telling you yeah. whether you you know and I, when i say going to change you whether you not you personally but whether you want it to or not there's going to be a sea change as you might say um because the age of the goddess is coming and there's nothing that can be done about it and that's going to impact the destiny of the entire world and everybody in it and there's nothing that can be, you can't avoid it. You can't uh, go against it. It's going to come. Now, the question is, what is it going to look like when this age of the great mother, I call it the age of the great mother of the waters, uh, whether it, I, you know, um, uh, Mami Wata out of, I don't know if you know Mami Wata, she's out of Benin and Togo. And then there's Kumbalamba out of Senegal. And then there's Hathor out of Kemet or Egypt. And, um, uh, She's already exerting her power. I don't know. I feel, you know, I, I feel, her, I feel her power every day. She talks to me. She, you know, why does she talk to me? Because I'm ready. I'm willing to listen to her. That's all it takes. 
believe that she is, believe in her, and listen to her. And the sisterin, as I as I like to call them, uh, yeah, that's where you need to be looking more and more. Not only looking, but reacting. Re, re, you know, you, you need to accept the revelation that she's going to uh, bring to pass. And yes, she's going to uh, restore the position of the woman and femininity, the feminine energy and the goddess. She will be basically she will become the supreme being. Oh yeah. Right. And there, and there will be a female, wait a minute now, there will be a female version of the avatar where people, you know, a female, I, I don't want to say a female Jesus Christ, but, but there will be a, fe, she might already be here, a female version of the goddess manifesting in human form. That too is going to happen if it hasn't happened already. All right. Um, Do we see any of that energy happening now with this, this things going on about, uh, about abortion and a woman's right to make a choice oh, versus oh, what boy, some of these exactly. men are saying. I, I don't think you want me to get started on abortion. Oh no, no. we don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you. Let me tell you. The great mother ain't having it. Sisters, though you sister and who are out there listening, she ain't having it. I don't want to say any more. You have to do deal with do with that what you will. All right, Dr. Finch, we have a question. Well, can, can, can we ask Dr. Finch to, to give some insider response to what I was raising about asking about uh, a while ago when when they, we had this, I think if I'm understanding, pre diagnostic came in this tradition, this understanding that the universe was woven into being by this feminine uh, yep. uh, energy power. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh -huh. and, 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 and was there, was this, was that, you know, Feminine energy consciousness taken over by masculine and and no, it got it, it, just... it, 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 it got moved aside. Now, why did it get moved aside? Okay, we all know what has happened in the last thousands of years of masculine domination, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's the one thing you got to you know that I had to face. That's what happened when the feminine when the feminine was predominating and predominant. The feminine energy, the 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 the, the, the womanhood. Um, what do you want to say? They um, let's just say they didn't make the goddess very happy with the way they were acting. And I'm just don't have to believe me. Just go and ask for find out for yourself. No, that, this isn't just this stuff that has happened. Masculine versus feminine, feminine versus this isn't just happened. The the women used to rule, you know. I mean, rule, but uh, just like, you know, when you rule too long and you got too much power, it becomes abused. Yes, women abused their power and they, ha they had supreme power. And so if you're wondering what happened, why are women in such a state now? Well, there you have it. And men, you know, just, uh, you know, beginning about the time of Jesus, or the, they just stepped into the vacuum that was created. Of course, they weren't any better, were they? Far from <laughs> it. I mean, you know, wars, uh, oh. war wars, you know, suppression of women. Um, uh, what they do during the Middle Ages, they uh, uh, hanged and they, uh, they just they've been, done, done terrible things. But, um, and the women just kind of had to step back, move back because men were just, had too much, uh, what do you want to say? Martial power at that time. Well, hmm, all right, but all that's come, Hey, that's been done. We've done, been there, done that, and the world, the world has suffered greatly from it. This world has suffered greatly from it, and it's going to, and so it is now, it is changing now, and it's going to change for good, well, it's going to change profoundly within, you know, within 20 years, 19, 20 years. Yep. Right. Um, so, so can we see? Can we see the the the, the etching of, of a pattern of the woven the wovenness in in, uh, in stone structures, stone shrines that 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 were developed and created that where where the sacred symbols were placed that 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 flooring was 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 uh, you know a stone flooring, but there was a symbol of, of woven pattern 
And so yep. that's maybe some effort to kind of balance between the masculine and feminine. Yes. Well, there, at a time, there was a time in ancient history, uh, there was a time even in the history of Kemet when there was that balance you're talking about, probably before dynastic times, or no, let's say early dynastic times, but it didn't last. That balance you're talking between masculine and feminine. However, and so the, the male deities slowly gained ascendancy, but they could never completely suppress the feminine. And you know what? They didn't even really try. They, you know, they were, they were, they were willing to accept their, 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 the, the position that they had managed to acquire, um, but they didn't. But it did not involve utter suppression of the female, because they had too much regard and too much. Uh, uh, what do you want to call it? I won't say fear. Awe of uh, goddesses like Isis and Hathor. And Newt, and Maat, Maat is what ruled their ruled their world. And Maat, just like the Statue of Liberty, is a female. Was Maat was was law and balance and female. So even with the rise of the masculine in the ancient times, it was didn't didn't have the same ramifications that it would would have uh, later times with uh, the, the suppression of the feminine. That, uh, that's only been in the last 2000, 2000, 2,500 uh, years. But that's gonna change. I'm not even, I mean, that isn't even a guess. That's an absolute certainty. Not my certainty, it's just a certainty. And it needs, and it's too late, and it needs to change. Dr. Finch, uh, we yes. have a question from uh, Sister Al Alicia. Uh, go ahead, Sister Alicia. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, go ahead. Hi, Dr. Finch. This is Alicia. How are you? Been a long time, but we commute on uh, Facebook. Yeah, we um, sure do. It's been a long time. <laughs> I'm glad to hear your voice. Yeah, I've been studying with Dr. Finch since the 1980s when Tony Browder brought him into D.C. And um, what I have been following him and learning is, is this is the time of the feminine energy. And if you pay attention to with Wakanda Forever, if you pay attention to the Woman King, you pay attention to the uh, all these movies that are coming out. The um, 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 the Little Mermaid, uh, yeah. the av Avatar of the of the Water. We're talking about the water, you know. Oh, all of that, mm -hmm. all of that is happening right now. Right. The, uh, the till it's the age of the woman, and like Dr. Finch was saying, it's. What you, the laws of the universe, what goes up must come down, what you give out comes back. So if you, if you create something negative, then we're going to get negative. So Eventually, bringing yeah. the balance to the male and the female. And the thing is, let me just get this in. I love, mm -hmm. I love mermaids. <laughs> I love mermaids. And if you go to mm -hmm. places like Jamaica, the Caribbean, those people mm -hmm. who live there say mermaids aren't, are, are not just figments of your imagination, you know, nope. they're not a mythical nope. beings, nope. they nope. exist. Yep. And because they, they they showed me places where the mermaids would come, they would come and just uh, in, into these inlets, and they would be there, and then they would and they can change according to the you know, local people. They can change into human form, and walk among people, and they just accept it. They don't even it's not even it's not even anything unusual to them, and they they taught me to believe in the re reality of mermaids. Uh, now, I'm not asking anybody who's listening to this to believe it, but, you know, I'm just telling you, there's so much, uh, <laughs> there's so much in the world that uh, we have lost sight of, but I, 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 lo I, I love mermaids, I, I truly do, but uh, yes, and, and the great goddesses of the waters always show themselves in mermaid form, whether it be Kumbalamba, Mom, um, uh, 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 Half the earth can't even get it out. What's it? Um, they they all they all show themselves in in uh, mermaid form. So anyway, that's that's just me talking. But um, to me, they're real. They're not they're not storybook fictions. You know, they're not. Uh, yeah, let me just say that. Yeah. So thank you for bringing in the mermaids to this conversation, <laughs> Alicia. I appreciate that uh, because. Uh, um, you know, my, my goddess is a mermaid. And each one of you has got a god, god and a goddess. 
everyone does. But uh, you know, you just you just have to know who are he and he. You have they're there, they're there for you. But let's not get into that. That's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> All right, Sister Judy has her hand up. Go ahead. Yes. Um. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I was I was thinking as as I was observing um some of the films like Black Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Woman King, those are some films I've seen. But as I observe and look around just the reality, it seems to me, you know, that at some point, I guess we will balance the feminine and the masculine, but the movie may not be depicting reality per se, but it seems as if the women now are, are we becoming, the women are becoming masculine, the gender thing, it's like a switch. It's not, is it the emasculation of the black male and the, you know, the lack of femininity of the woman is she becoming, is it almost the message I got from Black Panther, just my message that I thought it was saying is that black women are going to take over or they will become the new men and men are, you know, women don't need men. They will become the men. No. So, so that's, that may be controversial, but anyway, without saying too much of what I believe, but um, yeah. I'm wondering with this, no, balance, it, is it going to be a, some out of balance for a while? Okay, I, I, I don't know if I can comment on that, but it's not impossible. But you simply cannot have a complete switch like you're describing, because then you haven't learned, then human beings, I'm not just saying women, human beings haven't learned a thing. You know, the whole, the whole, the whole issue is restoring, not not starting, restoring the balance that used to be there, and that. Ha and in fact, if you don't have that balance between male and female, masculine and feminine, man and woman, God and goddess, uh, human beings aren't going to survive. And I, I mean that. I agree. And so, yeah. Now, what is that balance going to look like? Um, I don't. I, I don't have. I don't know about that yet, because uh, there's certain things that men can do. And there's certain things that women can do. And what you, what you do, what, what has to happen is that all those uh, different, uh, what do you want to say, abilities or capacities, they need to balance one another. You don't, and you don't, uh, um, what do you want to say, you don't, uh, uh, you don't extol one over the other. Because heck, I mean, shoot, you know, boy, are you kidding me? I had a mother, <laughs> and let me tell you, you didn't, I, you, shoot, my mother, mm, uh, she was strong, very, very strong, and her children adored her, but she was no, she was no um, pushover, not by a long shot, you know, uh, and, um, and I think mothers have that, that they, they, they mothers, have almost a natural ability to inspire devotion in their children. Why, why, and, and why not? The children come out of the female womb. In natural situations, they feed at the female breast. They're close, they're physically close to their mothers for two, maybe even three years. So yeah, um, and see what, what hey, now here's what I would say. Women should not give that up because it's like giving up your power. Uh, giving up something that gives you part, a big part of your power. So don't. So whatever else women do to assert, is that the word, assert themselves or put themselves in the right position that they used to have, you shouldn't give up those things that, have, that, are, that make women essential to society. No, you shouldn't. And, no, and don't, what's, what's the word? Don't uh, diminish them. Don't say, well, that's just, that's just woman stuff or that's just female stuff and you know, we don't do that anymore. Yeah, you got to do, I'm not saying you need to uh, do things the way it used to be done, but certain things you can't give up because because the society can't, won't, won't survive. Right. Nobody will. All right, uh, Brother Bauman Daly and then Brother John Jackson has have uh, questions. Go ahead, Bauman Daly. Uh, I was going to say that um, the, dis uh, the discussion has, uh, or some of the discussion has focused on 
the prominence of women in films and the kinds of themes that are uh, emerging. But we have to put this in, uh, in a larger perspective because in the last 50 years, the whole uh, issue of women's studies has revolutionized how we look at gender, male and female. So that's my comment and uh, I won't elaborate any further. Thank you. Okay. We'll, Thank let that stand on, we'll let that stand on its own. Let's, uh, let's go ahead, uh, uh, brother, brother John, go ahead. So I, what, what comes across my mind as you speak about the, the change in the women and, and this change that's gonna come about, I can't help but think about how it is right now. And for that change to come about, that doesn't sound like it could be a change that would come by, come by without some kind of battle, bloodshed. I mean, <laughs> the dominant culture is the dominant culture. I mean, and they ain't giving up nothing easy. So, you know, I don't, I'm not saying, I, I was raised by women, so I'd love to see the women take control of this planet. But, but at the same time, you know, things are what they are. So. How is that transition? I know you said you can't tell exactly how it's going to happen, but do you see that happening without war? Uh, uh, not really, but here, here's the thing. You see, the thing is what we have to do, and we haven't really made any moves, enough moves to do. We, we've got to protect, our, protect ourselves. Protect not just eat ourselves individually, just protect our, our spouses, our children, our siblings, our grandparents and grandparents and, and all the other, and just protect, get, develop a protective aspect toward all black people. Now we can't save the world, we shouldn't try. But we can do better among ourselves. And we gotta go take the attitude toward ourselves that uh, 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 the way things have been going, it's just not, no longer tenable. Not if we're going to survive. And um, so we need, you know, and, oh, the, one of the things I was starting to say, but I didn't get around to say it, that I, I think that there ought to be or needs to be groups of men and women of equal numbers, if possible, small groups everywhere, and, and deal with these issues. Deal with the hard issues, you know, get, 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 get angry if anger is appropriate, talk get down, get, I mean, just, you know, work, you know, get into it and do it seriously with a serious intent. You know, you don't have to be nice and nicey about it. Oh, well, you know, we just, everybody comes in and acts nice and doesn't, no, 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 no. You, 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 you deal with the issues that are facing us and are part of our, our lives and our world. And we got to do it. And soon, if not sooner, if you're trying to survive collectively, I mean, because it could, because think of this as an issue of collective survival, because it is, and no mistake. All right, Brother Kalahari uh, has been raising his hand. Go ahead uh, with your question, Brother Kalahari. Can you hear me, uh, Minister? Yes. Can you hear me, Minister? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Um, Dr. Tashaka said that there were some African, um, the Africans had uh, a fat farm for women, a fattened up women. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the comment I wanted to make was uh, Dr. Ed Robinson said two women calculated the distance from the Sudan to the North Pole uh, 600 years before it was built. That was written on a slab inside of the, uh, the pyramid in the Sudan. Uh, Dr. Ed Robinson gave the figure. I, um, I don't know metrics, but he, he said something to the effect of a uh, hundred million something or other. I, 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 I don't know what it, what it was he said. But in, at any rate, he said uh, two women, uh, um, they were um, astrologists. Uh, uh, I was wondering if the doctor could comment on what uh, Dr. Ed Robinson said. No, uh, I don't know anything about that. I'm not saying oh, it didn't happen. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised. In fact, you know, that's the thing. That's the thing we're having to revive. We're trying to have to recover because there was so much knowledge and power among ancient Black women 
to, especially in places like the Nile Valley, not just Egypt, but Ethiopia, et cetera, that um, uh, it's, that isn't surprising. And one of the things that we have to do is recover that knowledge, recover that information, recover that knowledge that, you know, because it, it really is pertinent to all of us. What, what, what you just described, I mean, that, that's pertinent to everybody, everybody in the race, so to speak. See, that's the thing. We need to see this as a collective enterprise, as a collective necessity. Not only that's going to uplift women, but up, uplift men too. Men let me need uplifting too in a different kind of a way, but they need it. So, and, and also put the time in. That's why I tell people a lot. Don't think you're going to get this done in your lifetime. You might, it might take you, it might take a hundred years. And if it takes 200 years, then put the time in. Because in ancient times, the ancient Egyptians used to, as I've already said, used to think in terms of 26,000 year cycles. 26,000 year cycles. Go ahead. So we, we need to be able to uh, uh, expand our notion of effective time. Because, you know, we are reincarnated, you know, from lifetime to lifetime. That, that is true. But that, that's a whole other subject. Now, you know, I'm, my, my phone is going to lose power here in a minute. So I think we, we, got, we, got a, we got a question before you lose power. Go ahead, John. You got a follow up to that? Go ahead. No, it's not a follow up. It's a question I wanted to ask earlier. I'm always hesitant to ask this question, but Dr. Finch is a learned man, been around for a long time. And you mentioned that something occurred prior to the birth of Jesus. My question is, that plagues me, is that an actual event? Is what, of, is what an actual event? The birth of Jesus. Oh, yeah. He was, a, he was, he was so, real. He was real. Okay. He was real. Now, was he the son of God? Well, I, I, only if you're a Christian. If, okay. you're a believing, if you're a believing Christian, then he was. But whether you believe or you don't believe, yeah, he was real. And he, he, should, he, he is entirely deserving of all the reverence that was paid to him whether you uh, have a religious uh, uh, awe of him or not. No, he was real. He was real. Now, i tell you what he didn't look like. He didn't look yeah. like those uh, uh, pictures of Jesus you see up there in your churches. Jesus wasn't white in any, in any stretch of the, by any stretch of the imagination. He couldn't have been. First of all, he's even described as having hair like wool of the lamb. Mm. Now, who the heck is that? He's described like that in the Gospels. What does that mean? Are you familiar with Walter Williams? I think so. No, no. Uh, uh, that name is familiar. He has a book, and he says on the cover of his book that there was never a man in human form in any name that ever walked the face of the earth named Jesus Christ. That's wrong. No, that's wrong. I'm sorry. It just is. His name wasn't Jesus Christ. It was named Yahushua ben Pandera, which means mm. Joshua, son of the panther. Mm. Yeah, that was his real name. Yeah, as a, as, and, and then I'm done because I'm really trying to resolve this thing because I was a Christian for 32 years and I've stepped away from that and been trying to resolve this whole thing about Jesus and, you know, following the Bible and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's something I really need to get. I think I've got to clear in my own head, but, you know, Everybody has an opinion. John, John, one of the things that I would suggest uh, reading is a book called Caesar's Messiah. Uh, Caesar's Messiah by, um, I can't think of the guys right now, but it, the title is called Caesar's Messiah. Caesar's Messiah. Yeah. Yes. And uh, Minister Amadi has his hand up. Go ahead. I hope, hopefully that... Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna be real quick. Um, I'm kind of want mine is related to Minister Macalisi's question. And it has to do with so Ms. Minister Macalisi mentioned about Neith. And so my question is related to uh, these ancient creation stories. So I always looked at the waters of noon, you know, out of which Ra emerged as really a feminine element, right? You know, because we know water is, um, you know, is, a, is another, you know, symbolic of femininity, 
among other things, the spirit and all that. And so um, I'm just kind of wondering in terms of within the, because I know that whenever I, um, you know, when I look at, you know, when they're talking about the noon, you know, it's a masculine, you know, they have a mass, you know, they call it like it's a he, but I'm, you know, based on this idea that everything is born of woman and that, you know, my concept is that Ra emerged out of the cosmic womb, a, a feminine energy. So I wanted to ask you, you know, based on the noon, based on Neith, where is the feminine energy as it relates to um, the, the creation story? Uh oh, uh -oh. <laughs> he may be gone. <laughs> well, I, I guess can, I won't be able to get my. <laughs> I can finish. <laughs> he might be gone. Uh, he might have lost his power. Uh, it's it's six forty five. Let me just uh, try to address that. I mean, when we talk about the primordial waters of noon, yes, and everything comes out of that. The uh, the hill that uh, that is Pata comes out of the noon. Uh, Atun the the uh, one that comes and sits on the hill comes out of the noon, and then the projections from his body, you know, uh, boundlessness and its opposite, uh, and, and others uh, all come out of the noon, the feminine quality. One of the things that he didn't say, but I've been I've been wrestling with this. Yes, uh, yes, John uh, Joseph Atwell. Thank you. Uh, that, that was the Arthur we were talking about uh, of Caesar's Messiah. Uh, one of the things that, um, so Dr. Finch said this, he said that the Sphinx is 55,000 years old, okay? Uh, I've been wrestling with, for the last five years, this information that says that the statue that we call Sphinx is not Hor M. Aket but it is Tef Newt. Yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Tef Newt. And that is going back to, to what's, what's known as the pre-dynastic period. So a lot was going on in the pre-dynastic period. Another thing that they say, just in terms of consciousness, right now we only have, operate with five senses when we come back into consciousness, full consciousness, we will we will realize 360 senses. Okay, mm -hmm. that's that's, uh, that's that's on the fringe, uh, even among Afro Afrocentrists. But uh, that is something that I'm uh, strongly pursuing, and uh, uh, scholars like uh, uh, Dr. Finch. Are, are verifying uh, uh, some of the things that I've been investigating. Uh, I'm sorry about the connection, uh, everyone. I'm, I wanna thank you all for, for joining us and, and hopefully this won't be the last time uh, that, that uh, you join us. Uh, next week, we will be talking about the Black Bible. Uh, somebody just sent me something, hold on, let me read it. Yes, there is. There is, but you, you know what, uh, John? There's a YouTube. There's a bunch of YouTube videos with Joseph Atwell that you can uh, that that you can look up. Uh, me, me and John uh, Jackson are having a private conversation. Uh, somebody said thank you so much. Is that what they said? They said thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Alicia for Alicia for for coming and 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 joining us. I have uh, something I'd like to share before we leave. Uh, hold tight, just a Before second. Before you go, um, uh -huh. the ne next week is next Wednesday, not next Thursday, right? That is correct. Okay. That is correct. Thank you. I took this. Uh, this is uh, a little uh, 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 film. It's only twenty six uh, seconds, but this is this is on the ceiling in Dendera, and this here, here we see the age of Pisces right here, and and it has. The whole uh, uh, solar system on the on the ceiling, and here is Newt, uh, you know, and she's she's swallowing the sun, and then if as you go on, uh, you you see her giving birth to. But this is on the ceiling. 
So what we're looking at is the hero's journey, and this is who Horace was. His name was Hero. He's a hero. And the hero's journey. So I'm going to take it down a little bit further. So, uh, you know, when you get to Kemet, uh, you want to go to Dendera. That's one of the, that's one of the temples that you want to visit. Uh, yes, I want to thank uh, uh, Dr. Finch, uh, and I want to thank the audience uh, 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 coming. I'm going to uh, uh, reach out to Dr. Finch uh, as soon as I get off uh, to thank him if, if his phone, in fact, uh, is working. All right. Um, I want to thank Please everyone. Give him our thanks, all of our thanks. I will, I, I will uh, and, and uh, I think he was appreciative of, of the attendance, the turnout for him. At, at one point, we had uh, 32 to 35 people on this Zoom. I want to thank everyone for coming. Hopefully, we'll see you next Wednesday. Uh, live Prosperity It's next Wednesday on this very Zoom at 5 uh, p.m., of Pacific time. So those of you on the East Coast, it's 8 p.m. So hope, hopefully you can join us. All right. Dr. Anike is going to be uh, joining us. Thank you, Sister Judy, for arranging getting Dr. Um, Dr. Finch uh, for us. And uh, I want you to give me Dr. Finch's number so I can reach out to him personally. All right. Thank you all. Guidance and protection. Thank you for the questions. Uh, live up.